Hello, hi Marcelo, and on this tutorial we will learn about users on YPath Orchestrator. So we'll learn how we can manage them from inviting them to our YPath Automation Cloud organization, to add them to our tenant, add permissions to a user, create a custom role and assign this role to a user, and also how we can assign them to a folder. So that's pretty much it, let's get started. And the user in YPath Orchestrator, it's like the same thing on the, about users on other applications. So it's an entity that has certain permissions or a role that uh, defines what the user is able to do basically here on YPath Orchestrator. So uh, to see uh, the users, we can go to tenants and manage access. And here we can see users, groups, and robot users also. So here we can see our user. So here we can see my user. So to edit the user, we can click edit and change the name. Else we can change some settings. And also the role that defines which permissions the user has. And to delete it, it's just also click on remove. So let's say now that we want to invite a user to our white path orchestrator. How we can do it? Let's learn it. So the first step, let's click on assign roles and let's assign a user. So add a user. So first we have to search for the user, but we have no users. So we have to invite one first. So let's click here on manage accounts. And as you can see, I just have my user. So let's click here on this button to invite a new user. And so here we have to paste the email of the user to be invited. So you can paste, for example, a second email that you have. So I'll paste uh, one of my emails. And now uh, already from here, we can set uh, the groups to which this user will belong. So by default, everyone, but we can also add to administrators, citizen developers, automation developers, and so on. So let's leave as it is, so only everyone, and let's click on invite. So now uh, the user uh, will receive an email. So I have here the email account opened, and here we can see that the user received an invite. So it must accept the invite by clicking on this button to be added. So let's click on accept invite. And first the user has to indicate the display name. So I'll insert one, click on next. And now as you can see, the user was added. So now if we go back, uh, here it asks uh, if you want to locate licenses to the user. So we can uh, locate, for example, automation developer license and save. So now let's just do a refresh. And here we can see now the user that accepted the invite. So it's added to our organization. So now let's add it to our tenant. So here now, let's go back to the tenant. So here where we are adding the user. And let's search for the user. It's here. Let's select. So now uh, we can define a role that basically a role will already give some permissions to this user. So let's say that this user is automation publisher and automation developer. Now let's click on next, next again. Here we don't want to do an antenna setup for this user. Next, and we can just click on assign. So as we can see, we have added a new user successfully. So first we have invited a user, accepted the invite from the user email, and now we have added a user to our tenant. And so it has already some roles, so automation developer and automation publisher. 
So about roles, let's take a brief look. So here, if we click on roles, we can see the roles that already exist by default. So are created by default on Orchestrator. So we can see which permissions a user has if we assign certain roles. So let's say that we want to know the permissions that has a user with the allow to be automation publisher role. So we go here and now we click on view. And here we can see that the user has permissions to view, edit and create libraries, packages, and that's it. Let's say that we want to know about the administrator. So we click here on a view. So we click here on view. And here you can see that there is a lot of permissions for a user that has the administrator role. So we have the default roles, but we can create our custom roles. So let's create one so we will learn how we can do it. So first we have to indicate if it's a tenant level role or a folder level role. So let's create a folder level role. So it will just have permissions on folder level. Uh, now let's define here the role name. So custom folder role. And now we can here define the permissions uh, for this role. So it can be, for example, view assets, view jobs, edit jobs, view logs, view queues, view process, edit process. So just to give an idea. And now click on create. And now we can see that uh, we have created a new role successfully. So now another thing, and let's go back to the user that was invited and let's connect to the tenant. So enter on the tenant. We can see the access, it's very, very limited. So it can see the folders and on tenant, it has almost everything restricted. So it can see only the packages, as we can see, app versions and alerts. So let's see uh, how we can give at least access to the demos folder. So pretty simple, we go to demos on our main account. And now here, users, assign and let's search for the user. Now here we set the role and it will appear the custom role that we created because it's a folder level role. So we can see it here. It will have these roles, assign and assign the tenant roles. And now if we go back to the user account, we can see that now the user is able to see and access the demos folder. And that's it for this tutorial. And if you want to learn more about Wipath Orchestrator, I have a course on Udemy that teaches about the platform from the basics to more advanced topics. So we get started by learning the basics like understand what are tenants, folders, machines, robots and more. And also how we can manage these key components of Wipath Orchestrator. As we learn about automation management from publishing and automation to schedule its execution on Wipath Orchestrator. Also, we learn about monitorization, how we can monitor our robots, our automations in different ways, how to use the Wipath Orchestrator API and much more. So if you are interested, you can find on the description of this tutorial the link to the course page so you can check out the details and also if you want, you can enroll on the course. So that's it and I'll see you on the next tutorial.